So listen, our first guest made history in 2014 as the first Haitian American elected official in Central Florida and served as vice mayor and commissioner of Orange County, Florida. Y'all, please help me welcome the one and only Miss Commissioner Victoria Pierre Siblin. Yes, come on. Beautiful, please have a seat. Thank you. You look stunning. Oh, thank you. You are very welcome. One of the most powerful women in the nation. It is, an, yes, indeed you are. You've done some amazing things. Uh, you are truly the epitome of the saying, your past does not define your future. I wanna touch on your past a little bit so people can get to know you and who you are and why we say that you are one of the most powerful women in the nation. You became an orphan at the age of three years old. Tell us what that looked like and felt like. Well, I can tell you. Um, first of all, thank you for having oh. me. It is truly my honor to be in your presence thank today. You. But Likewise. I can tell you, um, I was born in Nassau, Bahamas to Haitian parents. My mom died all of a sudden in the Bahamas. Mm. I was three and I was abandoned by my father. So I was brought here to the United States. Mm -hmm. And you know, America is a great place to be. Yes, it is. Um, when I graduated from high school, um, I did not have a social, I did not have uh, wow. ID, nothing. So I found myself 18 years old and just out there trying to figure it out. So I started the immigration process wow. because I was an illegal immigrant. Remember I said I came from For the Bahamas. For all of those years. All those so years. So you were allowed to go to school right. and I do could, everything. I could still do all of that. Ah. But then when it was time for me to go to college, mm -hmm. that's when I found out that I was not a permanent resident nor a citizen. Oh my goodness. And I had to start the immigration process. It took me 30 years. 30? 30 was years. Was DACA in place then? No, DACA was, was not nothing. in place. Oh, nothing wow. was in place at that time. Um, I was ordered deported, um, but thank God, you know, he at the time, yes. yes, at the time, President Clinton was in office and he mm. passed Tarifa. So that's when I started um, the process and, you know, I received my green card, That's my amazing. permanent residency, and then after three years, I became a citizen um, in 2008. In 2008. I was 33 years old. And so in a few years later, you're yes. making history so yes. other people through laws that you've helped make can be can transition through and be citizens a lot easier. It won't take 30 years for them to do it. Well, I, I can tell you, you know, the immigration process is still a difficult process. Yes, it is. Um, but I don't deal with the immigration policies because we're local. Mm -hmm. um, it's a county government and federal government is those are the uh, folks that deal with the immigration and federal laws. Thank you so, for clarifying yeah, that. Is so. there anything on your local level that you do for immigrants that can help them go through the process of the federal government? Just asking. Not really, okay. not on, okay. a, on a local level, okay. um, but we can always direct. I get calls all the time. Mm -hmm. um, people just need to find out where do I go? Right. Who do I, so we yes. can definitely direct them in the right in the right, right direction. Right, right direction and who they need to reach out to. And that's so, awesome. Yeah, that's how we definitely can assist. That's fantastic. Would you tell us about um, you diligently serving on key Orange County government advisory boards and also regional governing boards? You're a busy lady. Yes, I serve on several boards. Um, Head Start, that's my favorite. Yes. Um, my babies um, oh my on the Head Start Policy Council. Um, I am on the Metro Plan, which deals with transportation. Mm -hmm. I am on CFX, Central Florida Expressway Authority Board, wow. which is like billions of dollars. So if, mm -hmm. if you're on the 408, the 528, any toll roads, that's the board that I sit on. And it just, and of course, the Orange County Board, but um, several boards. Several boards to make sure the city is running and the everything county, is being yes. manifested. The county yes. is being, yes. <laughs> so your motto is progress requires collective commitment. What does this mean to you, Commissioner? When, when I say that, 
I mean, a lot of folks think that government can solve every single problem, mm -hmm. and that is not true. Mm -hmm. It takes all of us working together to bring about the progress that we desire and that we want to see. Mm -hmm. So it takes our non-for-profit, it takes our for-profit companies, it takes individuals, it takes families, it takes churches, it takes all of us within the community to see the progress, not just government to right. make some changes that we, you know, that we want to see and we desire. That's so true. So listen, let's talk about some amazing things that you've done. You secured the approval of $250,000, that's a quarter of a million dollars, y'all, <laughs> for Orange County small CRP funds to help support small nonprofits in Orange County. What did it take to secure those funds and what kind of impact did it have? Well, we have a budget process, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to recognize where in the budget mm -hmm. we can take some funds and direct them somewhere else. So I knew that a lot of our small non-for-profits, the, the grassroots folks mm -hmm. that are out there, I call them my, uh, my sharpshooters, because they know how to reach a certain demographic that some of our larger non-for-profits cannot. Correct. So, and it's very hard for them to compete mm -hmm. when it comes down to receiving grant funding. So I said, let's separate this funding and have it for just our small non-profits, our grassroots folks, That's to amazing. give them some capital so they can do their work. Because a lot of them, believe it or not, when they start their non-for-profits, it's out of their pockets. Correct. Yeah. And then it's, you need the funding. And do. most of the time they're kind of overlooked yep. because you need a lot of data. You got to be in business for like two years yeah, of yep. nonprofit. For, so that's You're amazing. Auditing, that, yes. Checks everything. and balances. Yes. Yeah, so. And you just don't realize you want to help, but then you realize there's like hurdles yep. to helping people. Exactly. So that's so fantastic. You're yeah. able to help. So listen, what kind of legacy? Oh. Let's talk about your legacy. Well, I can tell you when I was campaigning, the thing that I heard from so many people, especially in my community, because Orange County is a diverse community, and you have a lot of people say, well, we want to go to a place where we feel at home. And then I had my seniors that said, well, we want a place that is our own. And so being from yes. the islands, I am going to leave Orange County with their first ever Cultural Center, which oh. is a, probably going to end up being ten million dollars. Oh my goodness! Yes. Oh my edifice. goodness! So that is that fantastic. Is my legacy Congratulations for for the community when they walk in, they will feel like they are at home. That is truly right a there in the Pine Hills community. Right in Pine Hills. <laughs> yes. Now that has changed. Yes. Now, last but not least, I want to ask you this question: since we know about you and your story from a young child. What would Victoria Siplin Commissioner say to the younger you? It's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. With that being said, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Commissioner Victoria Siplin. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with good trouble.